Uh, which one are you uh, answering, Aaron? I think Nathan had a question here. Oh, yeah. He was asking, you know, like, when you enter in the distance, how is it in your AVR? How is it doing the time delay? Mm -hmm. So I was saying that depending on what DSP you're using, <clears throat> it depends. So you can, like, in the mini DSP, you can actually say you want this many milliseconds away or in mm -hmm. time, right, for delay. But most, most of them that ask you to enter in a distance, it's going to base the time delay off the one that's closest to you or right hold on i just had it right the first time uh <laughs> furthest away from you yeah so if you have one that's two feet away and you got one that's six feet away well it's going to delay the one that's two feet away in time but that still doesn't mean that you're going to have proper phase alignment because time is not phase they're related mm -hmm. but they're not the same thing that's here yeah. don't forget that time delay can't make up for improper phase alignment so it is possible i mean I do this all the time and it's still like, it's hard to like, you know, visualize it, that something could be time aligned, but not necessarily phase aligned. It could be out of phase, but the timing is correct. Yeah. The example I give is if you just take like a coaxial speaker, they're already time aligned. Mm -hmm. Now take the polarity of the tweeter, flip it. Now they're out of phase. Mm. They're time aligned, but they're out of phase. Yeah. That's so. a good, that's a good example. So how about this though? Let's say, I uh, I have my main speakers and I have my sub. I take a sweep in REW of both of them. So I have my phase of, of both. And then I, uh, I say time align because there is a time align feature in REW. And I say time align at 80 hertz, right? Mm -hmm. um, is that going to be in phase? Uh, so they shouldn't ask you to time align. Okay, so, all right. Time delay is based on either signal, like the time that it takes for the signal to propagate through multiple DSPs, right? So that would be latency. So that would be one reason that you would want to time align. And the other one to be makeup for the physical differences in, in placement, right? So you could time align the signal, and it's basically all you're doing is just saying, delay the time that the signal comes out of this speaker Mm -hmm. to match that of the other speaker. So now they, the signals come out of the speakers at the same time. So that's what you would use time delay for. But if they're asking you specifically to use it at a particular frequency, then they're doing something with the phase too. I don't know why else they would ask you that. right? So, you, so time delay will rotate the phase at, at different frequencies if that's how you want to use it. But if you're using it just to actually delay the signal propagation time, which is how most of us are using it anyway, then I don't know why they would be asking you for a particular frequency. That doesn't really make sense to me. So, Okay, so <clears throat> how about this then? Um, can you use just the time, time delay and say, you know what, I'll, I'll miss the first cycle. <clears throat> I'll get it on the next one, right? Just so I can... Well, if you don't so have phase, phase rotation and you only <clears throat> had delay, could right. you possibly use the delay to get phase alignment and yeah. close enough time delay so that it's not super noticeable. So I actually have a website for like my car audio yep. buddies. Uh, it's a time delay calculator. I don't even remember the website. It's aaronsaudiocorner.com and then time delay or something. I don't know. It's easy to find. Mm -hmm. um, but part of that, there's like a little extra section that says, if you want to play around with phase, then enter your crossover point. And it'll calculate the time delay needed uh, to adjust in phase the um, the rotation, right? So what I'm getting to is theoretically, and it kind of works, you can use time delay to manipulate the phase rotation. But ideally, you have both. So you have time delay to say, because speed of sound doesn't care what the frequency is. It's the same at all frequencies, right? Mm -hmm. So you would delay the time of flight from one speaker or subwoofer to the other one, and then you would say, okay, now I've got this phase mismatch. Let me fix that via other means, like an all-pass filter, or mm -hmm. you can just play around with different filter networks. You can try, you know, like a Lequist Riley or a Butterworth and, you know, different order slopes for the different speakers. There's all sorts of things you can try to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can even just flip the polarity. because there and, and there's one trick that a lot of people use, pro audio, car audio, home audio, tons of people use this, is when you're trying to set the time delay by ear, if you want to make sure you got it nailed right, you do the nulling method. So you would play like a test tone or pink noise, and you would just move the time delay on your mini DSP. Well, first of all, you take 
one of the speakers. So let's say you take your subwoofer, you flip the polarity coming out of your mini DSP. So where it's 180 degrees out of phase, and then you just mess with the time delay until you can no longer hear that frequency, until it just sounds like it's falling off a cliff. And then you flip the polarity button, you're back in phase, and you're in business. I love those tricks, right? Yeah, those yeah. That's so, ways, like, you know what? Right. Forget the measurements, right? <clears throat> Play these. When it cancels out, then you're perfectly, you know, out of phase at this place. So right. And I then like flip those it. little tricks. Yeah. So it's, it's just all sorts of different ways you can try to do it. Um, it's really hard to get time and phase dead on with a multi-speaker system you know okay so here's a here's a question when you let's say if you don't have phase rotation and you're just doing what i said where you're kind of like just making sure that they're phase aligned at the crossover right yeah as best Even you if can not perfectly time aligned right not not spot on um how noticeable is that difference versus actually being time aligned and perfectly phase aligned. Yeah, that's a really good question, actually. Um, and it's hard to explain. I think it's one of those things where you would almost just have to hear it and then A, B it. Because like even playing around with time delay between left and right speaker, if you guys, if you ever want to just have fun with it, sit down and play with the um, the position adjustment in your AVR and just move it and see if you can walk the sound stage. I mean, you can physically move the center, the center around left to right. You can steer that center around as you want to. Um, when it's perfectly lined up, it sounds much more full, much more cohesive. But if you're like little iterations away from that, maybe if you're like 0.05 milliseconds off or something like that, are you going to notice? Is it going to be like night and day? Probably not. I don't think most people are going to notice it. But if you have the ability to flip A, B that, you're going to hear that. Now, higher frequency stuff, not so much because you, then you start getting into comb filter patterns. Um, even just like from a tweeter to a mid range, you can run into that where it's like, just a click of time delay one way or the other. It may make eight kilohertz in phase and then it may make five kilohertz out of phase. It just depends, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Mid-range frequencies is really where it's more dominant at and higher higher frequencies is where level is dependent. I'm trying to find this uh, this time alignment uh, tool. Let's see, in REW. So have you used that? No, I didn't even know it was alignment a Alignment tool? Hold on, let's see. 36 and 38. Okay. Let me see if I can share this. All right. So there we go. Share. Share. Screen. I like that Elon's got the uh, birds in the background. It's like, it's so peaceful. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. You can just hear. You can just, I just hear them. Like, I'm just like, wow, this is nice. I feel like I'm on a walk, but not on a walk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're back. Hold on. I got them. I got them. Hi, okay. user. Yeah, somebody, Tim, I don't know whoever has the has the account of this. Uh, have you guys gone in and set up the word blocks? You know yeah, what I'm talking no. about? Somebody may want to do that. No, because that, that would be like half Chana's vocabulary. Yeah, <laughs> or, you know what? That's probably true. Make it his back. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, Here, look, it'll be easier if I share the my entire screen. screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is going to look weird because I have a ultra wide. Okay, so there we go. Oh, look at you with the yeah. ultra wide. Can you guys see this? This is look pretty hard to see. Uh, I mean, I can see stuff, but it's, yeah, it's hard to see. Look at those phase wraps. Solo, solo mode. Okay, so, all right. So, what we're looking at right here is 38. Um, so this one that I'm switching on and off. Yeah, okay. That is my, uh, left speaker right okay floor standing speaker and this other one that i'm looking at is the sub okay so right now it's psychoacoustic smoothing i could change it you know 148 hold on the orange one is the sub uh yeah then you run your sub high or is that just letting it play all the way up to figure out where to cross it um this is no adjustment right now okay right? so, so no filters raw, at all no, no nothing right yeah. And so what it shows you here is like you can set, and this is an REW. Okay. You know, let's say 80 hertz right here. And it shows you the phase traces down here, right? At this point, let's say 80 hertz, right? Okay. And then if you hit alignment tool, that's it pulls up this, right? Okay. Um, and then I can say align phase slopes at cursor. Okay. Right? And it shows you in black what the summed response would be. Cool. Or I can say align phase at cursor. 
And so you can see that's what happens if I align the phase. And so it'll tell me how much delay I need. Yeah, yeah. You know, of course, I should probably switch these. So I'd delay the sub or uh, no, mm, depending on the AVR, right? Yeah, I'll start mid-range. Add this to the, the, um, to the AVR. Yeah, I'll start mid-range and work my way down for time delay. So, but you can also do invert polarity, and you can see, okay, cancellation. Oh, that's black cool, man. Less, right? So that's worse. You don't want yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, but the other cool thing is, um, instead of using this, you can kind of just move the delay and see how it affects things. Oh, wow. That's so awesome. Yeah, it's kind of crazy what math can do, right? Yeah, dude. This, and it's the, very John, good. The guy you, who you, makes REW is oh like on another level, dude. How? And I did. there's all sorts of stuff that he's, like I'll see somebody post something about the new update. And it has this new thing. And I'm like, wow. If I'd have had that five years ago or 10 years ago. Yeah. So crazy. anyway. That's cool. I'll we'll have to check that out. It's a cool little thing that you can use if uh, you just want to do your own uh, sub calibration. You know, or you want to just check to see how good your auto calibration is doing. You can kind of use something like that. So anyway. Yeah, that's cool. I'll have to uh, play around with that one of these days. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Watch out. Make sure to join us every Monday for our live stream at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern at youtube.com forward slash daily i5.